Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Like I was saying earlier on the video that I made, uh, the live stream about the heart attack that I had, um, that I had someone I was going to uh, try and interview this evening, and he's been gracious enough to do that and work with me on a time frame and what have you. Um, and basically... Uh, this is going to be a Bigfoot story, and I'll let him do the introductions and stuff. And But at first I wanted to say, uh, if anyone out there has a story they'd like to share, you can contact me at brentonson at gmail.com. I'll leave that in the description in case you need to look to uh, spell it and what have you. And uh, if, um, if anyone wants to contribute, they can go to a link in the description, PayPal me. And I really appreciate those people who have stepped forward to help me with the uh, um, doctor bills and stuff. Uh, right after I got done doing the live stream, I had uh, um, the hospital call me after they've got, gotten more examination of the tests and stuff. And uh, um, they made me an appointment for uh, 9 o'clock um, Monday. And this is uh, Friday right now. Oh. Yeah, this is Friday, um, to come in and do a what they call a stress test. I really don't know exactly what that is, but um, but the doctor told me not to ignore that, so I'm going to use whatever if people have uh, sent to me. Man, I'm going to use that for a down payment on it because when I said I didn't have insurance, they kind of started to blow me off. And I said, well, hold on now. Um, I... I maybe can come up with some kind of payment you know because i don't want to die um you know a heart attack kind of makes you a little bit scared about it to, you don't neglect that kind of thing and uh so thank you to all of you all who, who has helped me out god bless you and uh and we're going to go to our guest uh um richard if you don't care buddy i'd like for you to uh give a uh you know a bio on yourself you know whatever you want to tell and where you're from and stuff like that and then we'll get into your story okay <clears throat> well my name is richard and i currently live in huntsville texas which is east texas uh 45 years old and i've hunted and fished all my life um primarily in east texas and uh used to live in deep east texas uh up around caddo lake marshall texas area and that's where most of this uh most of this has occurred Okay, and uh, so I know that the Big Thicket stuff um, has been kind of popular. You, 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 when you emailed me, you said Piney Woods slash Big Texas, or Big Thicket, I mean, pardon. Um, and uh, I've heard about the Big Thicket through, like, Sasquatch Chronicles and stuff like that, so... Okay. Um, yeah, so that that seems like a very interesting area that has a lot of a uh, lot of activity. So if if you want to just kind of a uh, you can give us kind of a an idea of what that area is like, and then just tell us you know what your stories are, your okay. first, first encounter and stuff, and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, primarily, um, most of East Texas is is when I said the Piney was big thick is just that. It's uh, predominantly pine woods. Uh, you have a rolling terrain, a lot of bottomland, a lot of what we call sloughs, which are you know usually marshy areas. Some of it retains water year-round. Some of it, you know, depending on rainfall. Um, a lot of underbrush um, due to the sunlight not being able to penetrate to the uh, to the canopy. So you have a lot of under you know underbrush, briar stuff like that. Um, it, it's just thick. Uh, a lot of places you can't see five foot in any direction. Uh, but it's, it, even being that thick, it's just full of game. Uh, wild hog, white tailed deer, um, you know, bobcat, coyote. There's still wolves here. Um, you know, so there's still a lot of game here. I know we get the occasional bear in from Louisiana. Uh, I've never seen one personally, uh, but I've seen them on game cameras, uh, the people I know. So, I mean, it's legit. Um, but that's pretty much the, the terrain and the piney woods, big thicket. Uh, some people call it piney woods, some people call it big thicket. So I just, that's why I, I, I label it as such when I addressed you earlier. So, 
So would you like me to just go ahead and tell you how it started? Mr. Britton, you still there? Oh, I'm sorry. I had the microphone yeah. muted. <laughs> Pardon me, man. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, no, you go ahead and you uh, you tell uh, the story. Kind of just start sure. start from the beginning and tell whatever you need to tell to kind of set the story up and uh, and okay. how you how you started noticing these things and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I, I tell you, growing up, uh, I had a, a great grandmother that lived there on the lake on Cattle Lake, and and we used to go over there all the time, and um, she would tell stories of, of Bigfoot, and uh, they called it a woolly booger, which I know you're familiar with, and um, but that that's what they called it. They didn't really call it Bigfoot, you know, then, and this was in the early 70s, middle 70s, and, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't really, I mean, I was a kid, so I thought it was, you know, of course it scared me, but I, I as I got older, I thought, well, that's just grandma's tell the, you know, get us kids to go to bed at night and stay out of, you know, stay in the house. And, um, but she claimed to have seen them, you know, several times around the house there. And, and, uh, uh, you know, so like I said, that's, that was my first introduction to, uh, to Bigfoot. Um, never really thought much of it. Like I said, other than it was, you know, a scare tactic for the adults to keep the kids in line. Um, fast forward, I was about 17 years old and, um, I like to go raccoon hunting, coon hunting, and I had one dog, and I had an uncle who had some property between uh, Karnak and, and uh, Old Town called Uncertain, which is over by Oncato Lake. And um, he had a uh, river bottom that ran through his property. And we own land over by Karnak as well, um, and I'd hunt there a lot. but. Uh, I wanted to go hunt his place, and I kept asking him. Kept asking. And he's like, "No, no, you know, there's, you know, you don't, you don't want to hunt there. There's no good hunting. Blah, blah, blah." Well, you know, being a kid, uh, we always know best. So I would sneak over there <laughs> at night and hunt his place. And he had this pasture, and uh, I've seen it done a lot. I mean, a lot of people. I don't know if this is nationwide or what, but a lot of these older older people would take and haul their stuff off, like just garbage junk, you know, like uh, old couches, that kind of stuff. And they'd dig a little pile and throw it in a junk pile and then bury it over. Well, he had his junk pile going there, his old couch there. Right? What I used to do is pull my truck up in that pasture and park next to that junk pile, let my dog out, and uh, she, she'd go to work. And, and I'd just sit down on this old couch and, and wait for her to start hollering that she, you know, I was on a coon, and then I would, follow after go down to the bottom and just to lay this place out is basically about a 40 acre pasture and it had a kind of a hill in the center so you when you drove in the gate you, you'd see the hill and then you'd go crest the hill and then drop down on the other side and, and um well the junk piles on the front section so i would sit there and i would take her over the top and drop her on the in the on the other side and let her loose and she'd go down that bottom that bottom was just just like I say at the bottom, it's it's trees and in a creek, and it's just ideal for for raccoons. Um, and so, like I said, I'd walk back and sit and wait for her to get on a trail, and then I'd, I'd go after her. <clears throat> I've done this several times, and I had a lot of success. And uh, I was sitting down on the couch. We were out there one night, and I sit down on the couch, and, and I, I want to say I was about 17 years old, and that's because I was a junior in high school. And usually it wouldn't take long for her to strike a trail. And I heard her make a noise. I'd never heard her make it. It wasn't really a, a yelp. It just it just it was just a, a bark that I hadn't heard. And so I stood up and I'm like, well, you know, she's gotten into something she she doesn't need to get into. And I, I started walking down there. And it, it was just starting to get dark. And uh Next thing I know, she comes barreling out of that bottom. I mean, she's trying to get in my in my front pocket. She is just scared. And I'm trying to calm her down, and I'm like, what in the world is going on, you know? So trying to get her settled down, and, and I'm trying to get back down to the bottom, and she just refuses to go. 
So I'm like, well, you know, this isn't going to work. So I figured, well, I'll, just, I'll take her home. She's got something wrong, you know. And uh, like I said, I've never seen her do this. So I started to walk back up to the top of that crest. I go to my truck, and I could hear something in the brush, like, paralleling me. It's probably about 30, 40 yards away, but you could hear it. And so I'd stop, and when I'd stop, it would it would stop. And then I'd start walking again, and it would start walking again, and I'd stop. And, of course, you'd catch it on that stop, and, and you'd hear it stop. And I'm like, hey, what in the world is this? So, I, you know, and he had a few cows out there. And I figured, well, maybe, you know, it could be a cow. It could be a deer. You know, I don't think it's a hog, but, you know, who knows? So, anyway, as I'm walking back up to the top of this hill, I hear the horn on my pickup truck sound off. And I'm like, well, now what in the world's going on? So I've got her on a on a chain, and I'm walking up to the hill, and you know, she has no problem going with me. She's scared, so she's wanting to go get in the truck. And as I crest the top of the hill, it's, it's just now getting dark. I can see the interior cab of my truck light on. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, somebody's messing with my truck. And I thought, well, maybe it's my uncle. He's come out here and found that I'm out here hunting, and I'm what it's supposed to be, and he's, he's probably mad at me. And he's, you know, he's waiting at the truck to, to give me a good, you know, ream and, and uh, as I get close to the truck, I, I realize my the door, the driver's side door on my truck is wide open. And uh, but there's no other vehicles around, so I'm like, well, you know, what is going on here? Somebody's broke into my truck. So I walk up to the truck and I, I drop the tailgate and I put her in the in the box, in the dog box, and I put the tailgate back up. And <clears throat> as I go to walk around, I step on on my uh, cassette holder, and uh, I'm like, well, you know. Somebody's ransacked my truck. So I walk over, to the, I grab the cassette holder, and I throw it in the truck, and now I'm, I'm kind of mad, and, and I think somebody's been out here and vandalized my truck. So I look in the truck, and the, the rear view mirror is ripped off, and the uh, top of the steering wheel is broke off, and the gear shifter is bent over towards the passenger door. And I'm like, what in the world? So now I'm just confused. And I'm at a loss because somebody's, I mean, this, this is an old 78 GMC pickup truck. It, it, I paid $500, but it was mine. It was my first truck. Yeah, you know, I worked two summers and this is what I bought. So anyway, it was my truck and, and my first truck. So that was important to me. I was, I was extremely upset. Well, I have, um, a lantern that fits on my waist and I have a headlamp and, um, I hadn't really lit either one of them. I just had never had my flashlight because when I crested the hill, I could see the truck light on. I just had my flashlight so I wouldn't step in a hole. So I had my flashlight. I turned my flashlight off, threw it in the truck. I had a 22 rifle with shorts, 22 shorts in it. And that's, that's what I would take to dispatch a coon with. So I had my rifle, put my rifle in the front seat. I look around. I get my, my, uh, door shut. I had it. Just, just everything I had to crank on that gear shifter to get it bend over, and you know I couldn't get it bent straight, but to bend it over, I could use it. So I fire my truck up, turn the lights on, and uh, I'm going to leave. And I did a circle, and I don't know what possessed me to do a circle, but I just circled, just did a circle when I went to leave instead of just driving straight up to the gate. And when I circled, <clears throat> I saw a guy standing over at the brush line. And there's no fence. I mean, he, this my uncle owned a, a pretty good sized place, about 400 something acres there. And there's no fence between the brush and the field. It's just it's just a pasture, and it goes right in the wood line. Well, anyway, there's guys standing there, and I was like, well, there you are. You, you know, you do that. You know, trash my truck. I'm gonna say something to you. So <clears throat> I was probably about mm, 40 or 50 yards from it, and uh, I got out of my truck. I grabbed my rifle. And I guess because I was so mad over the truck, I wasn't really thinking straight. You know, I was young, I was hot tempered, and uh, I wasn't scared. I was just mad. And so I start walking up on this guy. I'm like, "Hey, you know, come here." And the guy didn't move, and I could see him in my headlamps now, or my headlights in my pickup. And, and I'm I'm off to the side walking kind of out of the light. I'm not in the lights. So I'm kind of walked to the, I'm over in like the dark part. We, you know what I mean? On the edge. Cause I don't want to blind myself when I'm looking at this guy. And I don't want to silhouette myself against the lights in the truck. So I'm walking up and I'm like, get over here. 
and the the guy kind of stepped back. And when he stepped back, I kind of looking at him. I'm like, man, that's that's a pretty big old boy. And so uh, I got a little four power scope on this rifle, and I and I told him, I said, hey, I've got a gun, man. Come over here. I want to talk to you about this truck. And uh, <clears throat> again, you know, he'd stepped back the one time, and he just stood there. So I put the gun, you know, I know you probably shouldn't do this, but again, I was 17. I put the scope up on him. When I did, that's when I realized this ain't a person. And, uh, you know, a lot of people describe it certain ways. I don't know. I mean, to me, it was tall. I mean, he was over seven foot tall. Um, you know, he was hairy. His face wasn't hairy. Uh, and he had, he didn't have a whole lot of hair on his head. I guess that's maybe why I thought at first it was just a guy. You know, I wasn't really looking at his body. I was looking at his face. And uh, so anyway, make a long story short, I realized this 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 wasn't uh, anything I'd ever seen before. Well, I had the twenty two in my hands, and so I would shot it. And, I mean, I put it dead center of his chest, and I started as fast as I could pull the trigger. But when I first, the first two or three rounds, it hit this thing. I mean, this thing, you know, twenty two doesn't kick, and, it was nighttime, so I was having a fire flash in my scope every time I pulled the trigger. But there's no recoil, so you can pretty much stay dead on the center target when you're when you're when you're pulling this trigger. So I, I you know, center mass, pop, 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 as fast as I can. In the first couple of shots, all it did was just kind of swat it its chest, like you know, if you're swatting something away. And that's I, I think you know it just wasn't really penetrating, but it was doing something to him. But the thing turned, and as it turned and started running, I mean, I was I was emptying my clip. I, I think I fired 13 or 14 shots. You know, it's been a while. But I know I'd, I'd put at least at least 10 rounds into this thing. So it takes off into the woods, but it never it never hollered. You know, never did anything like that. It just, it just took off. So I go back and get in my truck, and I got a second clip sitting there, and I pop the first clip out, put the second clip in, and I'm going after it. So I pull up to the edge of the woods there, and I look down, and there's blood. So I start to go about you know, following a blood trail. And I go about 10, 15 yards in the brush. I've got my lantern. I've lit my lantern on my belt, lit my head lantern, lighting this thing up. And there's blood on the, you know, on the saplings, there's blood on the ground, there's blood in the leaves. So I'm like, all right, you know, this thing's going to die. You know, I've hit it enough times with 22 in the chest. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's hit something. So I got about 15, like I said, 20 yards in there. And I'm thinking, you know, something came over me, I guess, a, a moment of clarity. And I'm like, wait a second. <clears throat> you know, this is a big animal. You just put at least 10 rounds in this thing. And you're walking in here in the woods by yourself with a 22. Probably not a smart idea. So, uh, I backed out, got in my truck, and, uh, and went home. I got home. It was late. It was about three o'clock in the morning, probably. Um, because we lived about, at that time, we were about three hours away. And uh, I remember I went home and and uh, got in the house. I was going to wake my dad up. I was like, no, they're not. Because I was over here hunting where I wasn't supposed to be. And uh, the next morning, dad was going to work. And uh, I remember it was, that was on a Friday night because the next morning he was going to work. He only worked a half day. Well, anyway, he, he uh, it went to move my truck because I was the last one in. And he came in the bedroom, woke me up. He's like, what happened to your truck? And I said, well, I meant to tell you about it. He goes, well, tell me about it at noon when I get home, you know. So when he got home, I, I told him everything I just told you. And he said, well, there's a reason you're not supposed to be out there. He said, they've seen, you know, they've seen some stuff out there. He said, uh, but if you hit it, let's go look. So <clears throat> at this time, we, we grabbed some big, you know, some deer rifles. And... uh we had a thirty out six, and I think my dad has three hundred mag. So uh, we went out there to my to my uncle's place. I hadn't called my uncle, but because I asked, you know, call call Uncle Vic. No, I'm not gonna call. He said, "Let's just go out there." So we went out there, and uh, I mean, it was really easy to find where he was standing. I showed him, and uh, there was disturbance here. Where he turned and took off. There was disturbance in the ground. I mean, it wasn't like a definable print. You could just tell something was standing and, and spun because his ground was tore up in a, you know, like a twist pattern there on the ground where he spun and took off. And there was blood there. You could still see the blood, you know, dried blood. And we went in there for about, I don't know, 40 or 50 yards, and the blood trail just stopped. 
and dad's like, you know, I don't, I don't have a good feeling about this. You know, yeah, uh, let's just go. So he goes, just, just don't come out here anymore. And I said, all right, you know, so, so that was, that was it. Well, being a kid, uh, you know, that, that warning lasted about, I'd say three or four months. And I wanted to go hunting out there again. And I figured, well, I'll take, I'll take a big rifle with me and I'll take some buddies of mine. And so I took three of my high school friends with me and we decided to go out there hunting. So I said, well, let's go earlier in the afternoon. And, you know, we're, usually we wouldn't, we wouldn't get out there until right before dark. So, uh, let's, I said, let's go earlier in the afternoon. You know, we can get out there and look around first. And uh, I didn't tell them why. I just, you know, I said, you know, let's go out there and look around. And, uh, <clears throat> so we went out there and then got in the pasture and I parked where I was parked and we, we started scouting around. Well, instead of going where I, I hit this thing, we went down to where I'd usually turn my dog loose at, and we went down there on that bottom and started working that bottom area. And we came on this old school bus that I, you know, we, I, I didn't know it was there. Anyway, it was an old, it was an old school bus. And I mean, it had been there a long time, and uh, I don't know how old it was. But there was no doors on the bus, and uh, uh, I mean, it was sitting flat on the ground, you know, no tires or anything on it. And uh I told my buddy, I was like, hey, go in there and look at that bus. <laughs> of course, nobody wanted to. But uh one of them finally went in there, and he's like, man, you got to see this. looks like a nest. I'm like, what? And I went in there and looked, and, and sure enough, man, it was it was like something had taken a bunch, a bunch of, of, of just pine needles and leaves and, and made like a huge nest in the back end of this bus. And it stunk. I mean, it, it, it smelled so horrific in there. It smelled just like, like dead animals, like urine, just musky, musk, just, just a real strong, just odor. And, um, so we got out of there and it kind of freaked one of the guys out. And, uh, so I was like, well, let's, let's, let's go and look some more. So we looked more. We didn't really find anything. And we saw some breaks, but at the time I didn't know what that was. Um, you know, we saw several tree breaks, and of course, like I said, none of us knew what that was back then. And thinking back now, of course, I know what it is now. But uh, so I, I think that's where the thing lived. Well, anyway, we uh, we were we were coming out of the bottom. We we're going to go up and get the dogs and start working. As we we're coming up out of this bottom, we found an old logging road, um, and we started walking up the logging road. While we were walking up the logging road, we were all pretty much walking four abreast of each other, and you know, just talking about whatever, and, and uh, one of the guys had to go to the bathroom. So we're sitting here waiting on him, and the next thing he knows, he goes, what is that? And we look down, and, and probably about 100 yards down this logger road, there's that thing again. Now, I don't know if it's the same one, but because the one I saw at night, and in the headlights, you know, it, it had a, a light brown hair to it. It wasn't dark. It was light brown, almost blondish looking. and. uh this one here was dark. You know, it, it wasn't black, but it was like a dark brown. So, it, you know, maybe because it, at night with the headlights, it's the same one. It, it just, you know, during day, different color, whatever. I don't know, but but it's standing there, and, and uh, you know, it, it everybody just, you know, standing there looking at it, and it walked back into the brush, and it never made a noise. And uh, one of these guys is about six foot six. And he's a lineman, and he went on to play ball at Texas Tech. He's a big old boy, and uh, and he was absolutely freaked out. And um, he was like, you know, let's, I'm going home. We're not, we're not staying. We're not. And, and of course, none of us really wanted to stay after that. So we 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 left and went home. So that's that's the second time I've seen an animal there. And I, like I said, I don't know the same one, but on that property, um. Through my uncle, I found out who owned the property behind them and um, talked to them and got permission. They had they have uh, this 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 uh, I, I guess it's a, a tributary off of Caddo Lake is what it is. And, and um, but anyway, this I when I was down there coon hunting, I found where this little creek bed would get cut off on this other guy's property. I didn't go on his property, but I could see he had a, a big pond over there, like a lake, a little small lake. And so I was asking my uncle about it, you know, and because uh, by this time, Dad had finally told him, you know, I went over there and, you know, I took the 
the uh, chewing out that I <laughs> I had coming. Well, anyway, I found out who owned this property behind him, and I went and got permission to fish the pond. And uh, me and two guys went out there catfishing one night. And while we were catfishing, we had something. We had a tent, and uh, we had a little fire going out there. And uh, we were catfishing all night. And about, I want to say, probably around midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, we had something coming out in the pasture um, or meadow, whatever you, whatever you, we call them pastures. But uh, it came out in the pasture, and, and you could kind of see it. Uh, you know, it, because you had the fire going, you had to step away from the fire, and you could kind of see it. And, and again, it, it was a Bigfoot. And I, again, I, this place is literally right off the backside of my, my uncle's place. So I don't know if it's the same one. I don't know if it's a different one, but it kept circling the the pond. And uh, of course, my buddies they they're like, let's let's leave. So you know, I wanted to. I was like, well, it's not bothering us. We've got you know, we've got a shotgun here and a rifle. We're fine. You know, no, let's go, let's go. So that was a, the third time on on in that area. And, uh, and after that, I, I, we kind of just stopped, you know, hearing it, seeing it. Um, you know, I didn't really go hunt my uncle's place anymore, uh, after I got, you know, yelled at the way I did. And, and, uh, but I used to go fish over there a lot. And, and we, we, as long as you're fishing during the day, there was no problems. But I think it was just a nighttime thing. Uh, but we did see that animal during the day. Well, I guess in the evening, uh, when we went coon hunting the second time down there with my buddies. It had been the first time I took somebody, but but anyway, after that I never you know, never seen anything again until about two years ago. Uh I was hunting deer hunting over here in a little town called Pennington, which is over by uh, Groveton, Texas, which is not too far from where I live now. And um I was with a, a friend of mine hunting and we we're in their stand and he invited me to come over and hunt his place. He's got 270 acres over here. And uh, we walked to the stand um, from his house. We just walked to the deer stand and got in the stand together. And we're sitting there. And I'd never even been on this place hunting before, so I had no idea what it was going to look like when it got light. Well, when it got light, it was just a logging road. And, and what it was, there's uh, it was a perimeter fence. And it was where it came in, uh, two ends of that, so a corner. And the logging road, you know, went up to that corner and then turned right and went down that fence road. Well, the stand was placed right there in the corner. So you could kind of see down one logging road and then see down another logging road. And um, so he was watching one way and I was watching another way. And it had got light and, and it was probably about 6.45, 7 a.m. in the morning. And uh, and I seen a little doe come across, you know, jump the fence and step off in the logging road and then drop down into the bottom. And I, and I whispered to him, I, you know, I, there's doe out here. And he looked, he's like, that's pretty small. I was like, yeah, I, you know, I just like, you know, there's doe. And about that time, another doe jumped out a little bit bigger. And I said, hey, there's a bigger one. So he said, well, if you want her, take her. So uh, I got my rifle up. And as I was getting set up, she flagged, snorted, stomped, and, and boogied down to that bottom. And I said, well, that was strange. There's no way she saw us. You know, she's 150 yards out there. And uh, so... Uh, He's, he's like, yeah, he goes, well, maybe a buck's coming, you know, because they were rutting. He said, maybe a buck's coming. She's not she's not ready to, you know, she's not in the heat, and, and she's letting them know stay away from her. And I was like, maybe. So we're sitting here watching about that time. This Bigfoot just steps over the fence, you know, and when I say steps over, he steps over like if you were stepping over a curb, just steps over the fence, walks right across the logging road, and right down to the bottom, the same spot where them does went. And I'm looking at this thing when it comes out, and he was too because he was expecting a buck to come out. So we were both looking at the same time when this thing stepped out. Well, he was speechless. He'd never seen anything like it. Well, I have. Uh, so I, I told him, I said, that's a Bigfoot. And he's like, man, don't tell me that. I live here. I said, well, I'm telling you, it's a Bigfoot. And uh, he said, I, you know, what do, we, what do we do? I said, well, there's nothing we can do. I mean, it's gone. But that was a Bigfoot. And he's like, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think so, man. That, that's somebody poaching. I was like, okay, well, I've never seen anybody step over a, you know, four strand barbed wire fence before, but I said, let's go down there. No, 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 let's. I don't want to. Do that. I said, come on, let's go down there. So 
We went back up to the house, got his pickup, and we drove back down in there. And uh, I said, stop here at the stand, so I get in the stand. So I got in the stand, I looked down there, I wanted to make sure exactly where it was. Uh, so I got, okay, here, I'll sit in here, and it's right there. So they're, okay, I know exactly where we need to go. So we go down there, and I mean, we we saw, we, we didn't see it, but I'm saying we saw exactly where it came out at. Uh, there was a trail. And uh, it's, it's a game trail, and it just walked down that trail, and that's where it stepped across, you know, fence, went across the logging road, and went right down to the bottom. And we're come across, I mean, this thing had to be seven or eight foot tall. A, you know, I've never seen a, like, I've heard people talk about ten foot tall. I've never seen it that big. Uh, they've all been over seven foot. How much over, I don't know. Um, but they've all been big. Um, I can tell you this one. Uh, the first one, I, I kind of regret shooting that first one. I think it was more an age thing that I was young. Um, knowing now what I've, what I've, what I've learned from listening to your channel and from, you know, hearing stuff, reading stuff, probably the dumbest thing I could have done was shoot the same with a 22 rifle. Um, after seeing this last one, uh, Brent, this was, it, it just, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's like natural. Um, the way the thing moved was so fluid. Um, and it just, there was, I, there was, I wasn't scared. I was very peaceful. Um, I don't know how to make it, I don't know how really to put it, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't uneasy at, at all. I saw it. I, I'd already seen, you know, seen, you know, three different times I'd seen them before. Uh, so it wasn't something that brain's having a hard time wrapping around. As soon as I saw it, I knew what I was looking at. Now, my buddy, he was, that's the first time he ever seen anything like it. And it scared him to death. In fact, he doesn't like going out of his place now at night because of it. And, I, you know, I told him, I was like, look, we didn't bother it. It's probably been here the whole time that, you know, y'all had this place for 10 years. It's never bothered y'all. I wouldn't worry about it. Don't let it change your, your, you know, your way of life. Um, but that's basically, like I said, it's, you know, it, 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 it's just, uh, I don't know if it's an animal or, you know, I've heard people think that it's a, a tribe of Indians or something like that. I, I don't know what it is. I can tell you that it's, it's built like a person. It's built like a man. Uh, it's hairy. It's a heck of a lot bigger than any man I've ever seen. Um, you know, I met Shaquille O'Neal in person in Houston one time. That's the biggest man I've ever met in my life. And these things make him look like a kid. Um, they're big. Um, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know why I shot at that first one. I regret doing it. Um, but, uh, you know, I was 17 years old and I was mad. And I think maybe that's why I know you've, you, you've talked about the making sound. I've never heard one make a sound. Um, so I don't know if that's strange or not, but, but that's basically it. That's my, uh, that's my encounter with, uh, with Bigfoot in East Texas. So I know they're here. I don't know how many are here and I've never heard of anybody being hurt by one here. Um, but then again, you know, there's, there's things that happen that people don't talk about. So maybe there has been, I, I don't know. So, so what do you think that, um, um, what sightings you have had, can you describe what they look like, the ones that you've seen, or were yeah. there different ones, or just, uh, all kind of similar? Well, I, I tell you, the, the ones that, the, 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 the two that I've seen at my uncle's place, and then the, the third one that was the, the place that bordered his place there at that little lake, uh, they could all, you know, that one was, I didn't have any lights that would shine that far on the lake the, that that we could see it. We were just basically using the moonlight out there, and, you know, it was full moon, so you could see the, and, and you got to remember this is a hay pasture, so it's yellow grass, so if there's anything dark standing out there, you can see it. So, you know, we just know it was dark, and it was big, and it was walking around circling us, and that was enough for those other guys to, let's get out of here. Um, the ones that I saw... And the, the the first time I saw the one that I actually shot at and hit, um, again it was it was hairy. The whole body was hairy, um, except for around the face. And uh, but it, it's kind of 
I was so mad. I was seeing red, to be honest with you. And, uh, because again, this is my, it's my first pickup. And I know it was, it was a, you know, piece of junk, but to me, it was a Lamborghini. And, uh, you know, once I put the scope on this thing and I could see its face, uh, that was not a person of math. That was, that was, that was a real live, you could see it breathing. Um, you know, you could see its eyes blink. You could see everything in that scope. And that's when I knew this is not, you know, this is a, this is a monster. This is, this is Bigfoot. This is, this is a real deal. This is not a, you know, um, I, I, I've heard of eye reflection. I didn't have any eye reflection that, that night. I mean, I had my head beams on it, my, my headlights on it. And, uh, you know, it just lit them up. Uh, again, in the, in the headlights, it looked, um, you know, he had, he had a, he's kind of shaggy up on top. Uh, if I remember right, he was kind of shaggy, but it was, it was a uniform, uniform hair pretty much. I mean, you know, it was long, um, but it wasn't, you know, like, obsessively long or like hanging off his hands or anything like that. I do remember his hands because when he swatted in the first couple of times I shot, he swatted. And, uh, I remember his hands, you know, having, you know, hands. Um, and, and he had hair, you could see the hair off his hand. Um, but to be honest with you, my drilling was going, I was mad and, and I, and I was just pop, 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 pop. And, and, and he turned and boogied on. Now the one we sold during the day, we got a really good look at it. It was a dark brown. Again, no hair around the face. Um, you know, uh, the it looked like you know a linebacker, just a huge football player with shoulder pads on. You know, and um, like with a neck roll. You know, you, you, where you can't see the neck, it's just the helmet's there, and and that's basically. I mean, that's that, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like if you ever see a linebacker with a neck roll, the neck pads and everything, and he just he looks like he has no neck. It's just a shoulder pad with a helmet. That's basically what the, what he looked like. Um, he, he, uh, muscle, I mean, they're, they're extremely muscled. The ones I saw were, I mean, there, you can see the muscles and say, you can see the power that they have. Um, and like I said, this one, I mean, if it's the same one, maybe he, he knew me. I, I don't know. It figured, you know, this guy's got a gun. He will shoot. I'm just leaving. I, I don't know, but he never got aggressive. I, I've heard of people saying that they, you know, there's usually more than one. We never had, when, when, when I say we, that time that me and my buddies were out there when, when my buddy was, was, uh, going to the bathroom and that one stepped out and he's the one that seen it first and said, look at that. Well, uh, we never heard anything else, you know, and we didn't hear it. It was quiet. I mean, it, it stepped out in the road. He just saw it for movement. And then when it stood there looking at us, we stood there looking at it and then it walked back into the, into the woods. Never heard anything, you know. The only time I ever heard anything was when I first got my dog. My dog come out of that bottom, and I was walking up to over the top of that little rise to go to my truck, and I could hear something in the woods paralleling me. That's the only noise I've ever heard from one. And like I said, I, you know, as far as how they look, they just they look like just like stud football players. I mean, that's I don't know how else to describe it. Um, the one that I saw here in Pennington was black. It was jet black. And I, and again, that it was, it was early morning, so I mean, it, it, the light could have, you know, but it was black. When when you seen its uh, face and stuff, did it look more human or more ape like or a combination? To, well, the one that I saw, the one that I fired on, I thought it was a guy, so it looks human. Um, it wasn't until I put the scope on it. That I'm like, this ain't a human. You know, this is not a person. Um, they have, like I said, what I, I mean, I was sitting there thinking, who is this hippie? You know, this long haired hippie dude standing here. And I'm, I'm looking over there and I was like, that's not a hippie. That's, that's an animal. And, uh, um, then, I, you know, like I said, the, the second one was when me and my buddies are together. Um, it, it, that's why I say, I, I don't know if it's the same one. I, I think it is, but it, it's same thing. The, the face has no hair around it. Um, the hair starts like right above the eyebrows and then the cheeks are bare. Uh, the nose is bare. The mouth's bare. 
and the eyebrow, you know, like from the eyebrows down is bare. It's just skin. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a light skin. It wasn't like a, like an ape, like a black skin. It, it was a light skin because it contrasted against the, the color of the, the, the hair. But, uh, they, to me, they look human. I mean, they, they have a, uh, you know, a, a human look. They, they have a, you know, flat, like a, like a, uh, like a, I don't know, a puncher's nose or whatever, like somebody gets your nose, you know, it's just got a flat nose and it's got a big, you know, it's got a big mouth, a big mouth. Uh, but I, you know, I've never been close enough where I could see the eyes or, or where I could see like the colors of the eyes. The only time I was that close was at night and I could, you know, in the scope, I could just, I could see its eyes, but I couldn't tell you what color they were. I heard, I've heard, i heard people say they're red. I, I didn't, I didn't see red eyes. I just saw eyes. I saw pupils looking at me. You know, right. yeah. And now, uh, now when you see the one it, that was looking, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say the one that I actually shot at with the twenty-two. That one was actually looking at my truck. Uh, he wasn't looking straight at me. Uh, that when I stepped out of the truck, you know, I, I had the I had the, the the high beams on them. So when I stepped out of the truck, I stepped out in into the left of the the truck. So I think that because he was looking dead in my lights, you know, he didn't notice or he couldn't see me. Because I've, I've seen that with deer before, where if you hit them with head beams and you step out of the truck, um, they they don't, you know, they they're they're the head beams got them kind of locked up. And I guess that's where the deer in the headlights uh, phrase comes from. It kind of locks them up, and and they really can't see what's going on to the right or left because they got these head beams in there. In there, and I had you know I had good halogen lights, and they they would light up the the area. You know, this is back before LEDs and all that kind of stuff, but but they were good headlights, and they like I said they. They lit him up, and I, you know, I don't think like when I looked at him through the scope, he was looking, you know, at the truck, and uh, and I was probably you know ten, fifteen yards away from the truck to the left of the truck, um, looking at him through my scope. Right. And I say him, I didn't look at his genitalia, you know, I didn't see breasts, so I assume it was a male. Um, you know, yeah. I, I've heard that females usually you can see their breasts. I didn't see anything like that on any of the things I've seen. I've all. So I assume they're males, or maybe they're solitary males. I don't know. Right. Um, now, when when you uh, uh, first noticed that uh, these things had uh, got in your truck, um, and you were kind of wondering, I guess, what was going on that these things. Oh yeah, used. yeah. But but I yeah, mean, to rip your it. to rip your steering wheel and your gear shift and. And, uh, well, let me I mean, let me tell you what powerful. I think happened. That, that takes some power, man. I mean, whoa. oh yeah. What? Well, here's what I think happened, uh, and I've thought about this, and this this is what makes the most sense. I think this thing was, you know, I had the window down on my the, the truck didn't have air conditioning, so I had the windows down, and uh, so anyway, um, it was just a it was just a single cab, short wheelbase, seventy eight GMC pickup, you know. Uh, it was all go, but no show. I mean, it looked like a hunk, but but the thing would run. Well, anyway, uh, I think what happened was I ain't got my door open. I mean, it's got hands, and I, I think it was, you know, that's when it got my door open. Uh, the door wasn't, like, jerked open. I mean, it was open. It was wide open. So I think it got the door open, and I think it was rummaging through what was in the truck looking for food maybe. I don't know. And, and I was a big, you know, I always had moon pies in my truck. <laughs> I don't know if it smelled something. You know, I don't remember. But the point is, is, I think it was looking for something to eat maybe, or it was just curious, but it was going through my truck. And I think what happened is it might have caught a glimpse of itself in the rearview mirror. And I think, you know, maybe it saw itself and didn't like what it saw, or maybe all of a sudden seeing another Bigfoot in the rearview mirror, it freaked it out because it jerked that mirror. Like I said, it jerked the mirror off. And, the way I look at it is sometimes if you've ever leaned into a pickup truck, you sometimes put your hand on the steering wheel for balance. And I think that's what it did. I think it had its hand on the steering wheel and it was leaning across runs and through stuff and just glanced up that through the mirror and, you know, and jerked back. And I think that's what broke the top of my steering wheel off. Uh, Cause I had that old hard plastic, you know, uh, round steering wheel that basically has, it connects, uh, you know, we have your horn that has a, the section that comes to the right and to the left. So, you know, it didn't have all the gadgets that they have now. Uh, 
So it just had the, the one bar goes across it. So in that top part's what it broke off. So I think it had its hand on there. When it saw itself, it, it jerked back and maybe it startled itself and broke it. I don't think it did out of anger. I think it just, I think that's what he, I think that's why he ripped the rear mirror off. And uh, I think he probably looked in the rearview mirror again, saw itself again, and, and, you know, the rearview mirror wasn't outside. It was laying in the floor. I think it slapped the thing off. And uh, I don't know how he did the, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe he was using his, his hand on the gear knob or something, but he had that bent over towards the door. And like I said, I, I, I stepped on my cassette. I had a little one of them old, uh, I don't know if you remember back in the, back in the 80s, they, you had those, uh, cassette holders that would, you know, hold like 50 cassettes and it was, you know, usually have like a zipper, you'd zip it around there. And anyway, that was, that was trashed out in the, in the, in the grass. And, uh, so I think that's what it was. Right. Um, yeah, that's, uh, man, that's amazing. Um, so do you ever feel like they were like super aggressive with you or they were trying to avoid you or what do you think? You know, I, I think that, uh, like I said, my uncle, he would go out there during the day to check on his cattle and, and do whatever he needed to do. Take, take, like I said, he had a little, little dump going out there and, you know, maybe take something that he didn't want out of the house or something out there and dump it. He'd always go out there during the day and never went out there at night. I think, like I said, the first few times I went out there, I had no problems. I, I think that, it, you know, maybe, you know, what's going on out here? Who is this guy? And, uh, and, uh, I think my dog, either got scent of, of it and, and freaked it out, and that's why she come running out of there. Like I said, that dog was trying to get in my front pocket. She didn't want nothing to do with anything that night. And it's a pretty good little coon dog, but uh, yeah, I've had her get in the amongst a, a bunch of pigs and not have any problem, you know, not freak out. Um, so something to scare her like that, you know. Obviously, I know why she's scared now, but but uh, um, I think it I don't. I don't know if it was going to be aggressive. I think it was more curiosity with my truck, because you know I don't know when the last time somebody was there, you know, at night with a pickup truck other than myself. And I think he'd seen this truck two or three times, and, and it's like I'm going to check this out and see what this is going on, you know. But the thing that confuses me, and the thing, the reason I think there's more than one out there is because if you remember what I was saying. And, I was coming over that rise and I could hear something over in the brush. And then I heard my car honk. So something was already at the car. So it, I let that motorcycle go by. <laughs> something was already at the car or at the pickup truck messing with it. And then there was something in the brush parallel to me. That's why I think there's, there's two. And that's why I said I don't know if it was the same one that we saw the next two times. Right. Uh, but but I can say the one that we saw at night, uh, well, there was, there, was, there was a couple of us out there fishing. Again, it was dark. It, it, all we had was the moonlight really lighting the thing up, and, and we couldn't. Our flashlights weren't. We didn't have a Q-beam or spotlight, whatever you want to call it. We just had a little handheld flashlights, and, and uh, or handheld flashlights. So they weren't strong enough to really penetrate. And uh, I don't know if it was a female or male. The ones we saw, the ones I shot at, and the one that – the, the four of us saw that was definitely you know there was no breast or so I figured it's a male so maybe it's a male and female pair I don't, I don't know but I know there you know I thought about like I said there was one parallel on me and then there was one doing the the uh the recon on my pickup and and uh you know I don't know if it was going to take a joy ride or what but uh you know yeah. so I mean that was going on at the same time the other one was walking with me and that one I think is what scared my dog so sounds sound like that's they were really like curious they're... about the truck because they were they they did quite a bit from what you were saying well in but uh, yeah no, and I mean I knows. kept all my yeah I kept all when I would shoot coons and stuff like that or you know I, I would throw them in the back of the truck so I mean I, there could have been that smell I mean there was there's old dry blood in the back of the bed of the truck you know and and, and of course we we uh, in Texas we use deer feeders and we feed corn and stuff like that so I always have there's always loose corn in the back of that truck back then. And, you know, I, there's just no telling. We'd throw fish in the back of the truck. So I'm sure that truck probably smelled pretty good. So, you know, that could have been it too. They could have smelled. I mean, apparently these things have pretty good sense of smell. So he could have smelled the bed of my truck and came over to investigate and said, hey, there's something that smells so, like, you know, there so, might be something back there I'm not able to eat. All right. When was the last time you had an uh, encounter out there? 
that I was seventeen, so that would have been in eighty eight. You, have you been out there much since then? Uh, no, my uncle he passed away, and uh, his aunt had it, and uh, I was going to go deer hunting out there, and then lo and behold, she passed away, and they ended up selling the place, and so I never have really been back out there since since I was about a senior. I mean, I went back out there a couple times. I was a senior during the day. I never did hunt it that much afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, after the after the 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 reman I got, I mean, I, I got read the right act left and right, you know, about, you know, breaking the rules. And I was told not to go out there and how disappointed right. they were and mean, everything like that. So I kind of did what they said there for a little bit. And like I said, we stuck back that. That's when I said, let's go out there, you know, and hunt. That's we saw it again. And then we saw, we found that bus. And I'm like, my buddy's like, man, we're not coming back out here. And then I, I started thinking, well, maybe there's more to this than I, than I realized. So I stopped kind of going out there at night to hunt and I just go out there if my uncle needed something or wanted me to do something with him out there, we go out there. But we didn't we didn't really he never really used the place that much. Like I said he had a few cattle on it, but you know, I can't I can't never remember butchering any cattle or anything like that. I don't know if it was like a write off or an exemption or something. He, the reason he had the cows out there, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. Do you now, like do I said you, he passed away. Do you think that that bus is still out there? I would assume so, unless the people that owned it, you know, have done something with it. Now, like I said, this is, he passed away in 88. No, see, I was, he passed away in 89, and she passed away right there in 90. So they, they've had that place now for, I think it was sold in 91 or 92, so they've had it for probably 20-something years. So unless they've gone out there and done something with it, I'd assume it's still there. Uh, and, and when you seen the nest in there, uh, did it look like there was one two or three or whatever kind of bedding areas in that one big nest like well areas. i mean was, now you know thinking back I, I couldn't really say i just remember that it, it was it was piled really high against the back of the i mean almost up to the little wind you know how they had those little emergency exits back then well i think they still do but they have those little emergency exits there's a window in there and it was piled almost up to the where that window is in that emergency exit door and and it was, and there was, there was, uh, just the only seat in that bus is where the, you would sit if you're the driver and the rest of the bus was gutted. So it was right. just a long, you know, deal. And, and, uh, and the nest was probably from that back wall, probably a good six or seven feet towards the front of this bus. And it was wall to wall. I mean, it was huge. That, and like I cool. said, it, that's it's pretty cool. In yeah. It's they fun. Would, I mean, that, in a way, that's awesome that they would, uh, um, you know, work to fill that thing up with bedding and then actually camp out in it, you know. Uh, well, if you figure, it's just shelter, you know, because yeah, there's no... Yeah, I mean, it's an awesome shelter, <laughs> you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, East, East Texas, we don't we don't really... I mean, if you go to West Texas or Central Texas, there's caves, but there's really no... There's no caves or anything like that. There's no... You know, we don't have boulders or you know, we don't have anything like that. So, uh, short of building a lean-to, you know, or maybe finding some type of huge uprooted uprooted tree i guess i mean i don't i don't know do you think that would be more of a winter time bedding area uh you know because in the winter you kind of want to get in you know somewhere yeah and uh do you think that was more of a winter time bedding area or just uh well see i mean i don't know i don't i don't know if these animals if they if they're you know uh, i know a lot about deer i mean i'm a deer hunting fanatic this is what i love to do um, so I know a lot about the way deer act, uh, you know, uh, and I just, with something like this, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that a deer, you know, will usually stay in a home area except during a, a, a doe will. A buck, however, when it's running, you know, you might, he might live on your place, but when it's running season starts, he might be four miles down the road. So I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if these animals, I've heard people say they travel, you know, they're seasonal. And then I've heard people say, "No, they live here. You know, they're they're here year round. If it's if they live on that, if they live in that area year round, then I would think maybe it's a you know it's their home. Uh, if it's uh, you know, or, or uh, if 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 they're seasonal, then maybe they just use it during whatever they're there. Uh, what I was seeing was was um, let's see, I that'd have been around February of eighty. Eight, and then we saw them again. 
it was a couple months went by, so it was probably around April, May. And then I remember it was, it was, it was, uh, when we saw that one when we were fishing, it was during summertime. So we were out of school. So it would have at least June, uh, at the time. So, I mean, it was, you know, spring, summer. Um, that's when I had my encounter. It was, it was all, it was all right there. I mean, it wasn't within a six, seven month period is when I was brave enough to go out there and, you know, do it. And then after, like I said, after I got chewed out, and then after I went back out there, you know, second time to go hunting, and we found all that in the school bus and saw that one again. I stopped hunting the place, but I always wanted to fish the place. So I asked my uncle if he could introduce me to the people that had that place next door to him, and, and he did. And that's, you know, that's when we went over and started fishing that place. Well, after that, I only fished during the daytime because I didn't want to go out. There. Nobody wanted to go out there with me. And after that, and then I don't want to go out there by myself, so I just go out there during the day to fish it. Did Did you uh, after? You know your full encounters and stuff. Uh, the different kind of encounters that you had and experiences. Uh, did you think that maybe um, did it change your basically your pattern of what you wanted to do? Basically, when it come to getting out there in the woods where these things are. Um. Well, uh, you know. I was listening to one of your shows the other night. It was the uh, the guy who talks about the Kentucky about the, the the man who was killed by the dog man and uh the men in black or whatever showed up. That guy there and he was talking about how he's dating a new girl and her her brother was saying, you know, he asked him the same thing. He said, Listen, I can let this thing change my life. And that, that's the way I feel. I mean I uh I'm not gonna let uh, nothing bad has happened to me. But my eyes are definitely open, if that makes any sense. Oh, I, oh yeah. It, I know it there's, makes a lot I, of sense. Uh, I mean, I, I know there's things out there. Uh, and after hearing these dog man stories, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm not Big one of real. I've seen it. Uh, yeah, I, I said, that, you know, Big, I, but now that I've, I mean, I know what Big, I know, I, I know that there's a Bigfoot out there, whatever you want to call it, Sasquatch, you know. Right, uh, whatever you. I mean, it's kind I know, of scary I know when you're in your tent. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, when you're camping, uh, that last encounter I had, where it reached in the tent and grabbed me, um, that kind of changes things, man. It's like, wow, you know, that's a. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't really know what to think, but I, I just wanted to leave when that happened because it scared sure. me. You know, because. Uh, it's an unknown deal at that point. It's like, what would it well, maybe do? And I've heard too many stories, you know, you know, so they all went through my head, you know. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, and maybe subconsciously it does bother me because I don't really hunt East Texas that much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I do a lot of my hunting now in the, in the hill country or South Texas, and, <laughs> and uh, um, I, you know, it, it's, so I really don't hunt a lot of East Texas anymore. Uh, I haven't been hunting East Texas uh since actually, now that I think about it, since uh, we saw that one over at my buddy's place, I really hadn't hunted these Texas since then. It's not that I hadn't wanted to, it's just I hadn't really had a place to go. Uh, we actually owned a place up there, like I said earlier, uh, where all this has happened. We had a place not too far down the road from it, but uh, Dad sold it in the, in the in the late '80s, early '90s. So we could, I kind of stopped, you know, hunting these Texas uh, and kind of switched gears. Plus, we moved. Um, and we started hunting the hill country, and uh, you know we we were a big deer hunting family, and, uh, and so that's what we primarily would have deer, hunt, you know, deer and turkey, and uh, and so you know I, I don't, uh, I mean, I think about it, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if I seen another one, um, but I can tell you, I never, I don't think I'd ever shoot one unless I absolutely had to. Uh, right. uh, yeah. The way I look at it is like, hey, if he's not bothering me. You know, that I'm not going to bother him. You do your thing, I'll do mine. Never the two shall meet, and let, let's just go on. But, but uh, of course, if, I mean, if I had to protect my family or something, I, I would have to take my chances and do what I had to do. But I, I can tell you that I do not go into the woods without my 40 caliber on my hip and without a rifle or at least a 12-gauge. You know, I, I don't go into the woods unarmed. I don't really camp, per se, Mr. Britton, but, uh, I mean, a uh, typical, you know, deer hunt for us is, you know, we we have either, you know, a house on the place or, 
or a uh, an RV. So we're not out in the tent or anything. And, and of course, we've got we've got four wheelers, and, and we've got the raised up deer stands. And you know, you'll you'll take your four wheeler to a certain point, and then you get off four wheeler. And you know, I tell you this: uh, when I step out of the when I step out of the door of the house or the the RV, I automatically put a, a round in my chamber. I mean, it's it's on yeah. safety, but I've got a round in the chamber. I don't I don't I never well, go in the woods. It's without had more of an effect. Yeah, it's had more of an effect than you kind of realize. I think so. Time. You know, I, I can tell you a funny story real quick. Uh, and, and my wife, can, in well, way, well, I don't, don't want to interrupt you, down. but hold on. Um, I don't want to interrupt you, but um, when you know they're there, that's an unknown ordeal, and yeah. it's a risk, and it's a calculated risk. And since I've known they were there, um, that's become more of a serious situation than uh, thinking they're there. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. Then. Well, there's, the story. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, there's definitely a difference between, I mean, you know, uh, well, I've seen it on shows and I've seen this and, you know, well, well you know, but, but when you've seen it and seen it several times, and like I said, I've actually shot, you know, shot one of the 22. I know it's there, uh, and, I, and I've seen them two different places. So I know they're not just in one area. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if there's a patch of woods, there could be one in there. You don't know. Uh, they're, I think they're very intelligent, um, or else they would have been, you know, already brought to light, hey, this is here. Uh, I don't know what the government deal. The government, I think the government knows about it. I've got a friend that uh, actually lives in Oregon, and I, uh, he was telling me that uh, he got he was he was hiking and got pictures of it, and he came on with some guys, and they're like, you know, they thought he's elk hunting, and he said, no, I'm up here just taking pictures and stuff. They said, well, you see anything cool? He's like, man, I got some awesome pictures of Bigfoot. And the guy took his camera and smashed his camera, and the guy's like, what are you doing? He said, listen, you know, if that thing got out, it would shut us down. I guess it was a logging crew. He said, "We're you know that that's it's not happening, man." So I mean, I, I think a lot of people actually know about it, but they don't want to admit it. And like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I was, I was watching your program with the, uh, was it four one one or something? The guy talking about uh, missing people or something like that. That guy I was watching a deal on that and and uh, talking about people going missing state parks or national parks. And I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that happen the government doesn't want to doesn't want to publicize because you know when people realize that they're not the you know we're not the a number one king of the hill out here, it, it puts a lot of things into question, and uh, I think that's what it is. But let me tell you real quick about the store for I forget. So uh, I had a little 14 acre place uh, about 20 minutes from the house here where I live now in Huntsville, and uh, uh, the, the front six, uh, five or six acres of pasture. We, we, my wife has a horse, and we kept our horse there. And the back part was woods. Well, I, I had put up a, a game camera back there, just you know, for giggles, to see if I could see anything on there. And I, I got some pictures, of some really nice hogs, and some uh, a couple of really, really nice bucks. And so I asked the people that owned it, "Hey, would you mind me hunting here?" No, no, go ahead. I said, well, I'll pay. No, you don't have to pay. You know, you're already paying to, you know, keep your horse here. Go ahead. I was like, well, thank you. So I went in there and I put a little old lean to stand up. And, uh, you know, I didn't put a feed or anything out there. When, you know, the deer were coming in there naturally and eating acres. So anyway, one morning I got up, it was about 430 morning. I ran over there and I'd park. I I would, there's nothing on this place. It's just a pasture in the front and woods. <clears throat> it's right off the highway. And the places on either side of it are, are big tracks of timber. And uh, so I, I pulled in and uh, pulled up to the wood line, turned my headlights off, jumped out of my pickup truck, and uh, the only light was, the you know, the, the dome light on my truck. And it was cold that morning. But I went on, on my way over there, you know, I had the heater going on the truck. So I grabbed my coveralls, my insulated coveralls, to put on outside the truck. And as I was putting them on, something heavy and hairy hit me in the side of the my body, in the, in the shoulder and, like, my waist area, and knocked me into the truck. I immediately, you know, thought Bigfoot. Because uh, this happened only about 
five years ago. So I immediately I thought Bigfoot. I grabbed my forty cal, you know, racked one in real quick, and turned, figuring you know it's on. And uh, and my wife's horse standing there looking at me. I guess it had thought that I was coming up to feed it, and it came over and gave me a nudge. And of course, a nudge from a you know twelve hundred pound horse is a little more than a nudge, but but uh, it, it, it scared the bejesus out of me. In fact, it scared me so bad that I just you know I, I went over the feed barrel and fed him, and then I just I went home and watched like it's still dark. I was like, yeah, let me tell you what happened. And of course, she thinks it's hilarious. I don't think it's so funny, but uh, yeah. So that that was kind of you know. So I don't know. Like I said, I you know. I don't go out there with the mindset that Bigfoot's going to get me here, but I, I definitely go out there with the mindset that there's more out there in the woods than just what you, uh, you know. You know, there's more than just pigs and deer and coyotes, stuff like that. There's, there's definitely things out there that, that, uh, that can hurt you. Whether they will or not, you know, that's, that's, you know, only God knows that. Right. Um, so in the long run, um, people have theories of what they are. What do you think they are? <clears throat> um, you know, I used to think they're having having had these encounters. I, I've done a lot of you know, there, there wasn't any internet uh, really like there is now. Even when I was growing up, uh, now I'm only forty five. So I'll be forty six here soon, but but uh. uh you know, I've done a lot of research, um, and I used to think they were, you know, some type of uh, ape. And then I, I thought, well, maybe, you know, I heard uh, I heard people talk about, was it Gigantopithecus or whatever? And uh, I thought, well, maybe that's what it is. You know, maybe something like that. It just, it's that not dead, and, you know, that's what it is. I don't think it is. I, I think it's definitely, uh, from what I heard on, on your channel, um, from what I've I've seen in documentaries, and from what I've seen firsthand, uh, I think it's a, definitely a humanoid, uh, leaning a heck of a lot towards, you know, us than any animal. And uh, I think it's it's more man than anything. I just think it's a giant man. Um, you know, they're massive. I think they, you know, from what I've understand from like again, listening to your channel and uh, and other stuff I've gathered. I think they probably have their own language. I think I, I read or heard somewhere that they can understand Indian language. So, so maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's an, you know it's a it's a huge tribe of Native Americans that's you know hundreds of years old that are just you know I, I don't know. I mean I can't explain all the hair on them, and but I mean again if it's a if it's a if it's a humanoid, it's, you know I don't know. I, I really don't know. I can tell you, like I said, I, I think they're more human than they are ape. You know, I don't think there's any ape to them. I think they're just really hairy. <clears throat> and I think that they, uh, they're definitely, definitely intelligent. You know, I, yeah, I think they're definitely intelligent. That That's the hard part to explain is, uh, if they were just an ape, they're, they're far too intelligent. And, um, but anyway, well, man, yeah. I, I really, uh, you know, you get any, you can say, go ahead. No, I just gonna say, well, you know, I, I've hunted a, a long time. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to take a lot of animals, and uh, and I don't sport hunt. I mean, you think we we hunt for food, and uh, um, uh, you know, I've never seen anything that's is elusive, uh, you know, or, or hard to find, or you know what I mean. So something to be that, and I know they're there because I've seen them. Uh, so. Knowing that they're there, and knowing how hard it is to prove they're there, uh, to me tells me that this thing has got you know just super intelligence, and uh, you know it knows, you know, what's going on. It's it's not you know it's not it's not something that just you know is driven by either sex or food, you know. And, and, and most animals, I mean, it's just you know, eat or procreate. That's it, and uh, it's not like that. So I don't think it is. Right? Yeah, I know it's it's very strange. But anyway, man, uh, Richard, uh, thank you for coming and sharing your story, man. And uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll send you my phone number and stuff, and uh, 
and uh, you can keep it on hand. And if you ever okay. if you have any more that you want to talk about, you, you're welcome to call me. And if you hold All on right. the line, yeah, no, uh, go ahead. I've got uh, I've got a bunch of you know, like I said, after that had happened, I talked to my family, and, and uh, I mean they they all kind of know what has happened, and, and uh, I've got other family members that have had you know dealings. With, with Bigfoot, and especially around that Caddo Lake, there's something about that area. Uh, that lake is bordered by Louisiana and, and Texas right there. It sits right on the border. And uh, there's something about that area that it's just a lot, a lot of information. Right. And like I said, there, uh, I've got other stuff I can I can talk to them about and see if they, they would care if I said anything to you. And yeah, I'll let you know. Sure, man. Uh, you can come and tell their stories if you want. Okay. And hold on the line there for a second. And, uh, sure. Uh, YouTube land, I, I appreciate you all listening to this. And uh, and uh, anyway, if you have a story that you'd like to share, you, you can always go to the description below and brentonsawn at gmail.com. And if you want to contribute to help, then uh, there's a link also in the description of PayPal me. And uh, until the next time, God bless you, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.